this discussion is going to review the environmental impacts of pipelines. This might help you with your EIS if you're working on that assignment at this point. Um, the environmental impacts of pipelines are great. Pipelines are somewhat of a paradox because we need to get natural resources like oil and natural gas from the lands that they're extracted from to the places where they're processed or shipped out onto the world market. Uh, most of the time the oil and the natural gas that's mined or extracted are in far remote places so we need to pipeline those materials uh, to the places where they're processed. Alright here's a pipeline going in. You can see here uh, one of the impacts is going to be habitat fragmentation. Whenever you have a pipeline you need to clear an area and what they do is they usually clear an area that's somewhat large. Um, if the pipeline goes in here you know they need to clear a certain amount of land space on both sides of the pipeline so that they can maintain the pipeline in a, in a safe way. Typically a helicopter will monitor the the property or monitor the pipeline um, you'll see people driving around just taking a look to make sure that everything's free and clear but they'll come in and clean out these areas after years after the pipeline's been installed and just maintain those those buffer zones if you will okay so here you go this is what the infrastructure looks like there's various sizes of pipe depending on if you're uh, moving oil or natural gas or in what volume but typically they're they're buried underground like in this case uh, this might be a natural gas pipe buried underground um, the oil ones are typically above ground so, so that you can visually see any leaks um, natural gas is typically below ground but you'll see uh, yellow signs in the ground that say natural gas pipeline is buried here call to dig things like that um, you know this is a sensitive in infrastructure particularly in the case of natural gas which is explosive All right and here is our natural gas um, infrastructure if you notice here in uh, Pennsylvania where we are eastern Pennsylvania there's two big giant pipelines one going down to the south here towards Louisiana, Texas, and then there's a few going west here. Um, one of those is the Buckeye Pipeline uh, that used to go right through my yard. We have quite an extensive infrastructure in regards to natural gas pipelines. The first impact here that I want to go through here is habitat fragmentation, and that's that's the big one. Um, anytime you build a pipeline, you're fragmenting habitat for hundreds, if not thousands, of miles. Um, in this case, they clear cut an area of forest. So animals um, that once had a huge forest have a fragmented habitat. And many animals will end up going to this edge and they know once they go into the clearing, they're exposing themselves to predators. So a lot of species of animals um, will actually turn around and go back. So now instead of having such a big area to roam, to feed, to live, um, this fragment uh, has basically impacted their, their breeding habits and their lives. All right, the number two impact here after ha habitat fragmentation is gas leaks. Anytime you have a pipeline that's underground or above ground, um, that infrastructure is not 100% safe from things like gas leaks. So in the top picture here, it says warning signs of a gas leak. You know, you might hear noises, you might smell, um, the vegetation could be killed, uh, soil might dry out, it might be abnormally hard or dry, um, you can see bubbling. Um, but when you have natural gas coming out of a pipeline, there's any number of things that can happen. You could have an explosion. You could have uh, people getting sick if it's in an urban area. You could have uh, the death of vegetation, which would impact the food chain. But, you know, it's very difficult to find or spot these leaks. All right, here's a picture of a leak here, a pinhole leak in the top left. And on the bottom right, you'll see these things where there's an existing pipeline underground. Every once in a while, that pipeline comes up above ground. And what they're going to do is use those pig stations to see if they can clean out the pipes or determine if there's any leaks. Here on the top left there, you see an explosion All right, of an existing pipeline. And on the bottom right, you see a, a little pinhole leak that's an underwater uh, pipeline. Here's one where there was an explosion, and it looks like they came and put the fire out. So now you have... a a, con a chemical contaminant polluting this agricultural field here and this is a picture in the infrared right what you're looking at is this black uh, smoke coming out here that's actually methane gas that's uh, natural gas coming out of an existing pipeline that's not naked or not uh, not able to be seen by the naked eye but this happened in California in 2016 and it made thousands and thousands of people sick in the bottom right uh, you can see people protesting the the, the incident. Um, it was a huge leak that went on for weeks, and 
at first nobody knew why people were getting sick and then after they discovered the leak it took them weeks to figure out how to stop it and how to remedy the situation okay here's one of those pig traps those, the uh, the pig stations like I said on the top left there you'll see those along the roadside they're usually fenced in and what they're gonna do is they're gonna send this scrubber on the right hand side there you see that little scrubber you call that the piggy that's gonna be sent from this station to the next one over and while it goes through those pipes it's going to scrub the pipes clean it might also might have an instrument on it to be able to detect leaks but these pig stations you'll see on the sides of the roads that's where they do their maintenance they could um, clean the pipes from there and that's what those are okay another impact I think we're on number three here um, machinery that puts in the pipelines can compact the soil or lead to soil erosion which can then uh, lead to sediment pollution in creeks and streams and so forth so any anytime you have a pipeline being installed the heavy machinery itself to do the installation or to do the deforestation here in this picture um, compacts the soil can you think about uh, trucks bulldozers cranes any of that heavy machinery that's driving along the area where the pipeline is going to go it compacts the soil and then when it rains the sediment either runs off um, or the water runs off could cause local flooding it can cause sediment pollution so there's impact of the machinery they use to install these pipelines so here you go all right here's that sediment pollution so if it, the soil is compacted or even exposed and it rains you know you can have sediment pollution entering a nearby waterway all right and then of course downstream somewhere the sediment pollution from a more local stream is going to enter a larger body of water and have impact all right natural methods to protect our waterways we can remember way back when when we talked about riparian buffers all right if you leave these filter strips along uh, waterways you can reduce the amount of sediment pollution going into the creeks and streams so if there's a pipeline going in nearby um, just leaving these natural buffers can be part of the solution of erosion you could actually install a riparian buffer you could plant plants or trees along the areas that are exposed and you know roots can hold down the soil and the vegetation can hold back on the stream banks another erosion control are silt fences all right, silt fence and silt socks are really popular ways to hold back soil and sediment pollution from a construction area. So they're literally these stakes that go underground just a little bit. I think it's mandated that they need to be four to six inches underground, as do the does the um, the actual silt fence itself. This should be underground about four to six inches, so that as there's water and sediment runoff, it'll hit the fence. The water will percolate through and the sediment will be left behind. So there's a reduced amount of sediment pollution entering our streams. And here's one in operation. See some construction road work going on here and the silt fence buried to hold back anything coming off this bank here to reduce sediment pollution. All right, a lot of times these things aren't installed properly. Here's one development. Here's one that wasn't installed properly and the water coming off the hillside in this case uh, was too great for the silt fence and it broke. All right, here's a silt sock. You'll see these along roadsides and construction zones. Uh, like the silt fence, they're staked down into the ground and just in an effort to reduce sediment pollution, the water with the silt or sediment in it will hit the sock sediment will be deposited and the water filters through. Cheap and easy way to combat this type of problem. You'll see these used um, in many many different ways. There's different colors, there's different uh, thicknesses, but the silt sock is a, a useful tool. Alright, straw matting is another way to reduce sediment pollution or soil erosion. Literally these huge areas of straw matting are placed down on hillsides or exposed banks uh, to reduce the impact of water falling on this hillside to reduce any runoff. Okay, here's one being installed here. Along highway construction. All right, here's one literally along a string bank. All right, usually these straw mats are put in areas where the grass is now going to grow up through here. Let's make that grass green. Um, the grass will be able to come up, so it's going to hold the soil down long enough for the grass to come up, which will the grass will then take the place of the straw mat. 
Okay, and the last one here to reduce sediment pollution is riprap. These are usually along shorelines or creek beds, um, even river beds here. It's literally riprap is just rock that they put down in an effort to stabilize the stream bank, reduce sediment pollution, and actually ends up being habitat for snakes and little critters and animals. Um, it also reduces water and ice erosion. But riprap is a very useful and cheap and easy way to stabilize soil and reduce sediment pollution. So you'll see this this strategy used all over the place, um, even in and around your, your neighborhoods. Rock cages are similar to riprap. Um, instead of just the rock strewn about, you know, obviously the rock is put inside of these rock cages. Very heavy, impossible to move, uh, very useful in areas that, that flood easily or suffer from, you know, frequent flooding. Here's a scenario where they're using a number of these strategies. You see the straw mat, you see the riprap, um, you even see some vegetative cover there in the background. Okay, so hopefully this little mini lecture here gives you some of the major environmental impacts of pipelines. Just to quickly review, you have habitat destruction, you have gas leaks, and soil erosion, which can lead to sediment pollution. All right, and, and don't forget, you know, the, um, the impacts of those impacts. I mean, you can have biodiversity loss. All right, people can get sick from gas leaks. Um, or you can literally just lose product, and that's a big problem. There are more gas leaks than you think when it comes to transporting uh, natural gas. And when you lose product, that's money lost, that's resource lost. Um, and then in the case of soil erosion and sediment pollution, you have uh, the degradation of aquatic ecosystems which leads to biodiversity loss, cost to the taxpayer, all that stuff. So when you're thinking about the environmental impacts of pipelines, it, it, there's a trade-off here. We need those resources, but there's some serious impacts, so keep those in mind. Thanks.